everyone! Welcome back to my channel. This is Skylar at Unicorns and Typewriters and I'm really excited to talk to you today about poetry. So I've mentioned my love for poetry books in one of my last videos when I was talking about some of my reading goals and a book that I was thinking about revisiting this month, um, which I still plan on revisiting. And I realized that it might be kind of fun to just tell you guys about some poetry books that I suggest or that I think are really great to help you get into poetry if you've never really gotten into it before. So I hope it is helpful. The first suggestion I would always have as a go-to is to read some Edgar Allan Poe. Um, Edgar Allan Poe is of course classic. His poetry is amazing, his short stories are amazing, and usually you get both in a book. Um, this one even is great tales and poems. It's hard to really separate the two when it comes to him. Even his short stories are really just poetic. So yeah, I highly suggest Edgar Allan Poe. If you haven't already checked out his stuff, or even if you've like only heard The Raven before, like give his other things a read because it is well worth it, especially if you like kind of darker writing and horror elements. Uh, you'll really love Edgar Allan Poe. I got into him back when I was like 12 years old and I used to be scared of everything when I was 12 years old but it kind of opened my eyes to being able to like express dark dark things and dark thoughts without being scared of them. I really feel like it was the first time I realized that I could express my fears through writing. I guess it just never occurred to me before that people might want to read that type of thing. So yeah, I just, I always will love Edgar Allan Poe. I'm always going to be a huge fan of his. The other poet that I do highly suggest to people is Charles Bukowski. Um, this book, You Get So Alone at Times That It Just Makes Sense, is one of a couple of books of his that I actually own, but I feel like this is a good one to start with. I just enjoy his writing. I don't know, like, I know he's probably not the best person in the world, a lot of people definitely have a lot of really negative things to say about him as a person. He definitely wasn't a perfect person. He was an alcoholic. Dude's got issues, but I can't help that I do connect to his writing. My personal feelings are not as negative toward Charles Bukowski as other people's. I have read a lot about him, and from my understanding, he did put on a persona of being a womanizer, which led a lot of people to kind of claim that he was a misogynist, and I don't think that even was actually him. I think he was a bit of a performance artist and a lot there's a lot of proof that he wasn't what he seemed to be in his time either but regardless there are certain poems of his that I don't enjoy reading that I skip over that I'm just like I don't know what he was trying to do here this doesn't make sense but there are some poems that just reach me so much in his work that I can't help but still love his writing. My favorite poem of all time is his poem that is called No Help For That. It always has been and it has a lot to do with the space on the page. Um, it is a poem about distance and space and places that can never be filled and there's all this space on the page and it just it's so beautifully written and the way that was thought out to leave all that space on the page symbolically as well just kind of blew me away. I mean, the first time I read it was in early college and I was just like, wow. Like it just, it's one of those poems that just sort of lodges itself right in your heart and you're just like, wow, I feel that so much. I mean, it's super short so I could read it to you guys really fast. It's called No Help For That. There is a place in the heart that will never be filled, a space. And even during the best moments and the greatest times, we will know it. We will know it more than ever. There is a place in the heart that will never be filled, and we will wait and wait in that space. Judge Charles Bukowski how you will, but I think his poetry is pretty beautiful, so I think it's worth giving a, a read if you're looking for, if you're just looking to get into poetry and looking for something, I don't know, that's perhaps a little harsher and a little more in your face than other poets that are more about being eloquent and beautiful, but there's something beautiful about that too. The next poetry books and poet that I want to talk about are the poetry books by Amanda Lovelace. So I've got four of them right here and I believe there is another that's come out so I really need to look at that because I really like her stuff a lot. The first three are a series and I think that's really cool. I think they're really cool the way she did them and the way she marketed them and their titles. Um, so the first one is obviously 
the princess saves herself in this one, which is really cool. And on the back, it says the story of a princess turned damsel turned queen. And then the next one is called the witch doesn't burn in this one. And then it says burn whoever tries to burn you. I think that's pretty cool. And then the last one, which actually came out, I believe just last year, because I ordered it as soon as it came out, was the mermaid's voice returns in this one and she tore the stars apart. First of all, the first book did super well, got awards. I think it got like the Goodreads award. This series did very, very well, but there's a lot of haters. And I feel like it is the type of people who are really into very literary poetry. I mean, this poetry is so approachable though. There's something to say about that. It's not like really hard to read. It's pretty simple. You don't have to interpret it. It's not like it's in old English or something. It's modern and it's real and I found it so relatable and the feminist power kind of within these pages and this sort of woman helping woman feel to them and the fact that the the woman always conquers a princess saving herself, a witch not burning, and a mermaid who gets her voice back. I mean, why wouldn't you like these? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like there was a lot of criticism. Like, now when I've gone on Goodreads, there's so many negative reviews of people being like, oh, this is junk. If you could just throw a word on a page and then it's poetry. Like, I don't, I don't know who those people are, but to me, they're pretty sexist and misogynistic because these books are really, really enjoyable, really relatable. And yeah, poetry is made of words. It doesn't matter how complex those words are. It doesn't matter how many words it's beautiful and it's in the format of poetry and I love it. So screw all the people who have an issue with that. And after this series, she started another series, which I believe there is another, uh, there was supposed to be a second book. I need to look into that. This book is called To Make Monsters Out of Girls. And on the back, it says, this is how I will finally bury you. And that's pretty cool. I love this front with the roses and the fake vampire teeth. This book was super cool because unlike the others, it actually has illustrations which I think is really fun I like them they're not super complex either but they're just dark it's a very dark book and it's kind of has that theme of monsters and vampires I love pages like this I mean this poetry is it's creative and it's groundbreaking and it's pushing boundaries and it's experimental that's that's what poetry is that's what it's supposed to be I love these I feel like she she really pushes boundaries and I really enjoyed this one. I just enjoyed it. I mean, I feel like sometimes we get so wrapped up in the idea that poetry and literary reading has to be hard, has to be difficult, but it doesn't. Like it can just be enjoyable, relatable. It can just heal your soul a little bit and make you feel like you can say the words that you're having a hard time saying. These books just mean a lot to me and I love this author, Amanda Lovelace. I think she's amazing. So I highly, highly suggest her work to anyone. I say definitely, definitely check her out if you're interested in getting into poetry. She's super approachable and it's just some amazing writing. I love it. The next poetry book I want to talk about, I actually got into because of the fact that I like to watch videos of spoken word or slam poetry, depending on how old you are and what you're used to calling it. Because when I was a teenager, we used to call it slam poetry. And in early college, we called it slam poetry. And then they started calling it spoken word because they felt like slam sounded too intense or something. I don't know. I feel like slam is a pretty cool title, like slam poetry. It just sounds awesome and intense, but I like that. So I guess not everyone is as intense as me. <laughs> um, but so anyway, I, I love watching videos of poetry, of that type of poetry, spoken word or slam. And I really enjoy the, especially like the button poetry videos. They're really good. I highly suggest giving them a search on YouTube. I found a lot of really amazing poets on there and I'd like to get even more books, but so far the only book that I've actually ordered, which I can think off the top of my head, I'm already thinking about a few that I'm like, I need to order those. So I'm gonna keep that in mind and I'll share that with you guys if I end up getting more poetry books. But this poet is Olivia Gatwood and the book is called New American Best Friend. And I just found this book super interesting. It definitely has a lot to do with growing up as a girl in America, especially as a girl who 
you know, comes from a different background. It's so amazing. It's very feminist. The reason why I especially wanted this book was that her poem about Manic Pixie Dream Girls actually inspired me to write an entire like master's degree level essay on Manic Pixie Dream Girls. So this book means a lot to me. I loved reading it from front to back. There wasn't a poem that I didn't enjoy in this book. And my favorite is definitely the one about Manic Pixie Dream Girls. I believe I have that even marked in here. It's called Manic Pixie Dream Girl Says, and it's a pretty long poem, but it's pretty amazing. Just to give you an idea, I'll just like read you the first few lines. I'll go ahead and link her video below so you can actually watch her video because no one can speak it better than her. But just to give you an idea of where this is going, the first couple of lines are, so I'll start with the title. Manic Pixie Dream Girl Says, have you ever heard this record? Manic Pixie Dream Girl says, let me save you with this record. Let me put the headphones on for you and smile while you listen. Cut to your point of view. Watch me smile as you listen. Hear that? That's the sound of you becoming a better person. <laughs> You've got to hear her say it. So I will leave the video linked below. Check out her poetry. Check out Button Poetry in general, any of their videos. It's really powerful stuff. And I definitely, it's something that I love to listen to. Um, and I would like to get more books from the poets that are involved with Button Poetry because they honestly have an amazing, an amazing group of people who are just so talented. The last book I wanted to mention is one that I have talked about before, which is Milk and Honey by Rupi Carr. I still plan on trying to read this before the end of the month um, as part of the Asian Readathon. This book is just really amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. I would highly suggest it to anyone. It just deals with a lot. It deals with a lot. <laughs> it deals with relationships. It deals with families. It deals with learning to grow and heal even when you feel damaged. It came into my life at like just the right time when I really needed to hear some of the things that the writer says. Um, there are some poems in here that really reached out to me and spoke to me and helped me heal and move on from some pretty bad things that happened in my life in the last couple of years. I feel like this type of writing is um, in line. It's similar writing to kind of what Amanda Lovelace does, but I think this came out first. So I feel like Ruby Carr paved the way for writers like Amanda Lovelace. So yeah, I highly suggest this one as well. I hope that maybe that's given you guys some ideas. I know this isn't a super long video. I know that I don't have like stacks and stacks of poetry and there's definitely a lot that I still wanna read as well. I'm interested in checking out more of Sylvia Plath's poetry after reading The Bell Jar this year. And I'm definitely just always kind of looking for new poetry. I'd like to read more of some of the button poetry speakers and writers that I really enjoy. I'd definitely like to get their books so I can read more of their poetry. And it's always something that's going to mean a lot to me. It's always something that I feel like I need in my life. I always like need some poetry. I said in a previous video that like I go to novels to escape and be entertained, but I go to poetry to kind of find myself and figure out things about myself that I haven't been able to figure out yet or that I haven't been able to put into words. And that is reading and writing poetry. So I don't know, maybe one day I'll write a poetry book. Probably not. I feel like I'm not that good actually, but I don't know. Who knows? I want to be a novelist more than I want to be a poet, but honestly, I'd just love to be any type of published writer. I'd just love for that to be a career that I can actually pursue and enjoy in my life. So yeah, I hope this video was cool. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm feeling like a little discouraged with my YouTube channel right now. I just want it to grow more and I wanna make more friends and I wanna communicate more with people. So if you're watching this video or if you've seen any of my others and you'd like to subscribe to my channel, it would help me out a lot and it would really boost my confidence um, for upcoming videos because it does get a little discouraging sometimes. Booktube is hard. But yeah, I've had a hard month with being super inspired by reading in videos because it's just, it's just been a really hard month to feel inspired. But I hope I'll be back with new videos soon and I hope I can think of some exciting topics to keep you guys interested and enjoying my channel. So I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye!